In today's True Crime and Tutorial Tuesday video, I'm talking about Ruth Ellis whilst doing my makeup. So keep on watching to hear why she was the last woman executed in the UK and to see me create this makeup look. Ruth was born on the 9th of October 1927 in Wales. She was one of five children who were raised as strict Catholics. As a young girl, Ruth loved clothes and aspired to make something out of her life. The family moved to London in 1941 and Ruth was 14 years old and left school to begin working as a waitress. By 16, she was starting to make the most of her looks, dyeing her dark hair blonde and was determined to live life to the fullest. At age 17, she had a brief affair with a French-Canadian soldier named Claire, who was a married man. She fell pregnant soon after Christmas 1944 and gave birth to a son, Claire Andrea, which everyone called Andy, on the 15th of September 1945. Claire continued to pay maintenance and visit Ruth and her son, who were living with her parents, until abruptly he returned to his family in Canada, sending her a bunch of red roses in a letter informing her he was gone. Ruth was distraught and felt abandoned. Her faith in men had been badly shaken and she would never see him again. Having to support a young son on her own, Ruth found work in factories and various clerical jobs. These were not very well paid and she decided to try her hand at something more lucrative. She began some modelling work and then became a nightclub hostess, finally earning a significant wage. At the age of 23, she married George Johnson Ellis on the 8th of November 1950. Her husband, 41-year-old divorcee with two sons, was a dentist and had been one of her nightclub customers. Sadly, it transpired that George was an alcoholic and prone to violence when drunk. Ruth became convinced he was having an affair, her behaviour towards him becoming possessive and jealous. The marriage quickly began to show signs of strain and when her second child, Georgina, was born in 1951, George refused to acknowledge the child as his own. Ruth could not remain in the situation any longer and the couple soon separated. Ruth went to live with her parents and returned to work as a nightclub hostess. Ruth worked hard and in 1953 became the manager of a nightclub where she met David Blakely. He was a man with public school manners and expensive tastes but also a racing driver with a passion for fast cars and hard drinking. At the time of their meeting, David was engaged to another woman, but soon moved in with Ruth, who lived in an apartment above the nightclub. He was smitten and began proposing marriage. Ruth initially desisted as she was still legally married to George Ellis, but eventually accepted. David began to show a jealous side and spent progressively more time at the nightclub where he could keep an eye on Ruth, who enjoyed much male attention from her customers. David's behaviour began to have an adverse effect on her earnings and his inheritance was all but depleted in the funding of his lavish lifestyle and on developing a racing car. Fooled by frustration and alcohol, the couple began fighting over money issues and before long, these fights became violent. David had been keeping another mistress, which had provoked jealousy in Ruth. She then took another lover, a slightly older Desmond Cousin, who had disliked David. Desmond was an RAF pilot trained in South Africa who flew bombers in World War II and later became an accountant. The situation was spinning out of control and on the evening of Easter Sunday, 10th April 1955, Ruth went to find David at the Magdala public house in Hampstead, London. She waited outside whilst David and his friend Clive Gunnell finished their drinks and left the pub. As they were getting into David's car, Ruth called out his name and then fired four rounds into his body. The fifth bullet, missing its mark, ricocheted off the pavement, hitting the hand of Gladys Kensington Yule, who was on her way into the pub with her banker husband. Ruth knew exactly what she was doing and made no attempt to flee the scene. Instead, she calmly turned to Clive and told him to call the police. As fate would have it, Metropolitan Police Officer Alan Thompson was having a drink at the Magdala. He found Ruth still holding the gun and cautioned her. A few minutes later, police from the Hampstead Police Station arrived, arrested Ruth and took her into custody on the 10th of April 1955. David Blakely was rushed to the New End Hospital but pronounced dead on arrival and at 11pm on the same day, witnessed by three senior CID officers, Ruth made a statement admitting to shooting David. The officers present were Superintendent Leonard Crawford, Detective Chief Inspector Leslie Davies and Detective Inspector Peter Gill. At 12.30pm on the 11th of April, Ruth was charged with murder. 
The trial took place at the Old Bailey, London, on the 20th of June, 1955. The only question put to Ruth on the stand by Christmas Humphreys for the prosecution was, when you fired the gun, did you mean to kill? Her reply was simply, it is obvious that when I shot him, I intended to kill him. The jury took a mere 14 minutes to reach the conclusion of guilty as charged for the murder of David Blakely. Ruth was held at the all-female Holloway Prison in Islington, London, to await her sentence of death by hanging less than a month away. The fact that Ruth had obtained a gun to commit the murder was not explored in the trial, and it was not until the day before she was hanged that any mention was made of it. In a statement, Ruth claimed that her lover, Desmond Cousin, had provided the gun and had, in fact, also driven her to the scene of the crime. In a strange twist, the authorities chose to ignore this statement and never followed it up. At the age of 27, Ruth made history when she went into the gallows at Holloway Prison on the 13th of July 1955, becoming the last woman to hang in England. As was customary with hangings, Ruth was buried in an unmarked grave in the Holloway Prison Cemetery. Following an extensive rebuilding of the prison in the early 1970s, all the bodies of the female executions were exhumed and the remains reburied in Brookwood Cemetery. Ruth was the exception, as she was reburied at St Mary Churchyard in Amersfoon, Buckinghamshire, with her headstone bearing her birth name, Ruth Hornby. Her hanging provoked much controversy, and on the day of her execution, the Daily Mirror newspaper ran a story attacking her sentence written by columnist Cassandra that later became famous. The general public also felt the need for their opinions to be heard, and 50,000 people signed a petition to the Home Office asking for clemency. The appeal was rejected by the Conservative Home Secretary. The force of public support finally won and 10 years after Ruth was hanged, the death penalty was abolished in Britain in 1965. Tragedy seemed to surround the deaths of David and Ruth. A few weeks after her execution, Ruth's younger sister died suddenly at the age of 18, supposedly of a broken heart. Ruth's husband, George, had been a heavy drinker and after sinking into the depths of alcoholism, committed suicide by hanging in 1958. Ruth's son, Andy, was deeply psychologically affected by what had happened and was living in a squalid bedsit when he committed suicide in 1982. So that is everything I have on this case and everything for today's video. So I hope you guys have all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one.